welcome to this uh, lunch uh, you know, debate. As you know, many of you, you were probably this morning, we have a debate at breakfast time, also organized by the, um, uh, the, the, the EIF on e-privacy. Uh, it was very interesting indeed, and a lot of uh, attendance uh, as well. Uh, and in some way, know that there's kind of connection also with this one. Um, well, as you know, oh, the, the, the specific uh, target is the free movement of uh, data in the in the EU. Uh, well, you all know that implement is a key platform for comments and driving force of trade in in, in EU, which uh, through data flows is underpinning European economic integration. However, and I think this uh, clause is a, is important and is a new thing that we can, uh, it is now starting to be developed with some clarity. With the developments of the Internet of Things and the importance of uh, data uh, flows, and uh, now goes beyond uh, e-commerce or even social networks. This doesn't mean that this is not so extremely important in these two areas, this is for sure. But now, indeed, the data that will be generated by machine-to-machine -machine communications will be of an unprecedented value. That's my, my opinion, you know. I like uh, that we can debate on that. Making of machine data the heart of the knowledge economy. This is an uh, important, you know, um, possibility and a real chain to what we are accustomed to now, that we are linking so much uh, data, any kind of uh, problems around the values or so, to more the, the, the e-commerce platforms so, or the social networks. But now there's a new uh, dimension, which I think is, 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 is very important. This will be particularly the case for Europe in some sense, I mean, in many other places. But in the case of Europe, I would like to uh, underline uh, this new opportunity, uh, which in addition to a single market of more than 500 million consumers, has a globally strong industrial sector, where manufacturing represents the major share of investment in our R&D, 62.3%. It represents a key source of sports, 8% of total EU sports. And in terms of employment, it has been demonstrated that each additional job in manufacturing creates 0 0.5 to 2 jobs in other sectors, depending on the sectors. Um, however, in order to fully benefit from this economic and competitiveness potential, uh, many actions as always needs to be taken, but I think it's, it's, it's interesting to keep in mind this, let's say, new reshaping of the scenario when we are talking about the data economy, and now we are introducing the, uh, the role uh, of making of machine data the heart of the knowledge, of the knowledge in uh, the economy, of the knowledge economy. Um, well, I said that there was an action to be taken. Was, you know, start with the interoperability. This is one of the questions uh, normally we debate or is debated between networks and services is a key. Yes, as well as example, according to McKenzie, 40 percent potential benefits of Internet of Things cannot be realized if connected machines are not able to work together. Uh, we know mm, different uh, actions in, in this uh, way. Um, uh, in Europe, um, of course, we must promote standards and common approach, approaches, best practices, uh, practice sharings, open ecosystem, and avoid lock in effects, in effects, in this regard, initiative that must be taken into account, for example, the case of uh, Germany, with the German industry uh, 4.0 platform. The other day we had a debate here uh, on platforms, on open platforms, where a representative, the director, I think it was, of Fiverr, uh, was also present and intervening in the debate. But secondly, uh, necessary uh, restrictions regarding the location of data 
within the EU deserve their own debate and, and, and finition. And according to uh, the move uh, and prevented, I mean, when it is not necessary to have such a restriction where data from a particular country must be in the same country. So this is something that we have, of course, to take in, into account constantly. Um, well, uh, I don't want to spend more time on this uh, because the, the, the one that I have to say uh, are the speakers. Uh, I want to pass the floor. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five speakers. I will have the speaker to have no more than four minutes, if possible. We can really concentrate in the core of the argument. Uh, first speaker was announced, Ambassador uh, from Denmark, but cannot be present with us. So it's going to be replaced by Christoph Subert uh, from the Polish Minister, Ministry of Digital Affairs. Then we have um, Pierce uh, O'Donoghue, which is the master of all this in, in the Commission. Uh, then we have uh, also uh, Lee uh, Makiyama, uh, Director of the European Center for International Political Economy. Then uh, uh, Anki uh, Rabins Hakar, CEO of Cogni. And finally, Dr. Klaus Mittelbach, uh, CEO of the um, German electronic, uh, Electrical and Electronic Manufacturers. Association. I must say that in the case of uh, Dr. Mittelbach, I had the opportunity to participate in a debate more or less two weeks ago, and then um, it was very inspiring. I mean, I hope uh, that will be, and I'm sure that will be today as well, uh, in developing, uh, you know, and, and bringing it, uh, on, on, on these things uh, of the machine to machine, the economy, the road to table industry, uh, the industries, and so on and so forth. Um, and I uh, will just yes, start, uh, I just will not mention, you know, later on any of you, yes. Uh, the first is uh, Christoph uh, Schubert from the Polish Ministry of Internal Affairs, and then following the same uh, list, uh, yes, uh, right. So thank you very much. Thank you.